Hey folks, hello gorgeous. Welcome back to Cartoon Commentary. In this installment, we'll be taking a look at the third part of the original G.I. Joe Real American Hero miniseries titled The Worms of Death. If you're listening along on the G.I. Joe Berg podcast, I am Michael Mercy, and you can check out my YouTube channel at Michael Mercy, where you can find other cartoon commentaries, 360 swag toy and other collectible reviews, movie and TV reviews, both new and classic, as well as book reviews. I'm joined once again by the gentleman from G.I. Joe Berg. Hello to Robert. Hello there. I am the sole member in Cape Town tonight. And also joining us is Paul. Hey guys, it's uh, me again. Hopefully no poop getting serious tonight. So oh, it, it might. There's giant worms in this episode. And finally, Stephen. That's right, fans and friends of G.I. Joburg and Michael Mercy. This is Stephen from G.I. Joburg. And we're about to plunge into our third episode of The Mass Device. I'm excited. And here we go. Everybody, get your DVDs set up. We've had some people ask, why can't you just put the video on along with the commentary on your YouTube channel if you are watching this listening to it on my YouTube channel the reason we can't do that is because that does not fall under fair use law fair use lets you use clips for purpose of review and discussion but uh, that's pushing it a little too far it'll probably get flagged for copyright so it's really not a big deal I'm sure a lot of Super G.I. Joe fans have these DVD sets either the fantastic new ones released by Shout Factory or some of the older ones. So that. we've got all our DVD menus set up. There is a blue dot beside The Worms of Death, episode three in the original Real American Hero miniseries. I'm going to give you a countdown. It's going to be three, two, one, go. And when I say go, you're going to press play. Everybody ready? Ready. And Let's ready. Start. Three, two, one. Go! Give those DVDs a second to wake up and the Sky Strikers. Hey, it's Boob Grabbing Duke. Boob Grabbing, that's this episode apparently. We'll fill you yeah, in on that later. Yeah, he's, uh, he's quite the lich. G.I. Joe HQ. Now, You're every, dead on, guys. Because you guys pointed that out, every time I watch this intro, that's what I'm going to think. What are those guys doing in the background? It looks like they were planting charges. I think Yeah, they're trying to break in. Yeah, they're they're not defending it. They're trying to get in. It's just the Joes are behind them. They flanked them or something. Mm. Pincer movement. They thought nobody was home. The G.I. Joe was there. <laughs> 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 I like how they oversized the fang slightly. It does put yeah. Cobra Commander's helmet slightly less close to the blades. Yep, and point. I can appreciate that. Good point. The fangs you know you were... can have a, a narrow margin with 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 uh, pilot safety, but the fang design is just plain ridiculous. It was in the original line, and then if you stick a 25th anniversary figure, if you somehow are able to get one, <laughs> uh, I know the 25th anniversary fang, they modified it, they changed the back peg so that the new figures would fit, but very, very few I find will fit in the new fang. And yeah, the size, Without getting a haircut. <laughs> and the size discrepancy is even worse. Well, Destro is not sitting in there anytime soon, so... Is it just my... Is it just my eye, or is this video quality not quite up to par with what we've seen already? Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's this is totally unclean, lifted from original master tapes. There's no, but the no, you can, but this the rest of the episode I think will look better. It's just the recap I think. I guess we'll yeah, find that's out. A, that's something I believe Shout Factory did. Is they just did a a small cleanup like a, yeah. Like a, like a small cleanup, a digital noise re reduction, etc. Okay, see, now I think this actual episode looks better than the, the recap that we just saw. So for some oh, reason... Oh, yeah, they the definitely processed it. Uh, so for some whereas, reason... And, and strangely enough, they didn't touch the, the recap. Yeah. I guess it's redundant. I guess it's uh, wasted manpower. It's odd. We can get a taste of what it would have looked like if we were just watching the original Masters. What's the deal with Destro's glowing green pupils? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's match Baroness's glasses. Um, <laughs> that's like the only thing I can go uh, go for. Mm. And do we want to get into the physics of Destro's moving metal mask, the mouth? Does he blink too? <laughs> He's a robot. I I've never noticed before, but does he blink? 
But they say apparently it's beryllium steel. I've never handled beryllium steel before, but apparently it is the most flexible metal. Is that a, uh, real, is that a real metal? Yes, it's on the periodic table of it, the elements. Because it's mentioned in Transformers the movie by one of the Dinobots, oh, really? beryllium baloney. <laughs> ah. Interesting. Well, I suppose it is soft like a lunch meat, which is why it responds like a, <laughs> like a rubber mask, I suppose. But the amount of movement and character that the animators got to his face, I think that's a, uh, perhaps a bridge too far. Mm -hmm. I kind of like yeah, how he was portrayed in the original comic yeah. books. You guys noticed the uh, War of the Worlds Walker and the interrogation pod from Star Wars going ah. on right here. Yeah. yeah. There's radioactive snake eyes. I love how the Cobras, he's, he's about to come out now and the Cobras don't want anything to do with him. He's a walking time bomb. <laughs> there was an artist like, or animation era earlier on. Uh, you had a suddenly a, a, an entire troop of, of Cobras appear out of nowhere. Mm. <laughs> Rewatching these, you always find these, these fascinating little nuggets that you never saw before. A lot of green lenses. Um, <laughs> Baroness with the green sunglasses, Doc. And how come you can't see Doc's eyes through his sunglasses, but you can with Baroness and Tripwire? Uh, it's sexier for, for Baroness. I'm not sure about Tripwire. This is one of my favorite scenes. Look at this. How porno is this? Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's inappropriate. <laughs> By, it's super inappropriate. I was gonna I'm say sure. I was gonna say inappropriate by today's standards, but pretty sure it was inappropriate by <laughs> that day's standards as well. That's so dirty. I've he just seen a new thing that I want to make now. <laughs> Heavy water is one of my favorite G.I. Joe MacGuffins. Um almost right up there with the actual MacGuffin device. Oh yeah. The um uh, isn't oh, heavy water. Heavy Water was also a, 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 a proposed nickname for one of the, the divers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's a cool nickname. But wasn't there a, a heavy, Cobra Heavy Water Trooper? It was like a glow-in-the-dark Toxo Viper or Sludge Viper. I, I'm a little fuzzy on anything after 1986. <laughs> I, know I remember thinking this is too cool. It's the fun dark action figure. <laughs> and I could be mistaken, but Heavy Water, I believe, was the code name for the research projects into the atomic bomb. Ah, ah it could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Torpedo being the funds, the complete antithesis of his comic book. And we've got poor radioactive snake eyes. I, I don't believe this is what actually happens to you when you overdose on radiation. <laughs> He's turned into a like a Sith Force ghost. And there's Timber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such Going a on the microphone. A... Boy and his wolf. Well, he's about to... Oh, he just turns his back on the wolf. But... The wolf You're makes a valid argument. Story, Timber. That's so cool. I don't think you ever see Timber again after this miniseries, do you? No, you do. You do. He disguises himself as a Cobra officer. Gotcha. <laughs> He's like... Some give me a slice of shocks. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Not quite, mm. but... Yeah. In this episode and the next one... There are quite a Great. few 1984 vehicles <laughs> that seem to be popping up, at least in prototype form. Yeah, Marcus. Now, this first. design made its way into the Marvel comic books as well. The Sharks' debut appearance seemed to ape this design. Mm -hmm. And, fellas, I wanted to ask, uh, Paul, you, you kind of made mention of it, but we never really touched it uh, completely. Like, Does everyone agree with Torpedo's characterization on this? Um. I do in the cartoon. I, I, I think it's it's completely wrong. It's not how he is in the comic book, but I enjoy how he is in the cartoon. So I agree with it, but I don't think that it's correct. That makes sense. What is what would co correct be? Because he's Hawaiian. He's uh well, all of the the Joe divers tend to have a sort of introverted personality. They're not people people. Oh, you know? and he's very outgoing. He's the Fonz. He's like the Fonz. I like his personality. I Though think, it does sound yeah, a little bit of an The thing about... It seems like an oversimplification, guys. 
The thing about Joes is that they're all oddballs. None of them fit a mold that you're supposed to fit. And that's why they're part of the G.I. Joe team, because they just didn't fit in the typical um, army or navy. And it's kind of funny to think that then the Joe team itself creates a mold of what a character is supposed to be. So I, I don't mind if Torpedo doesn't fit in that mold. Holy this crap, Snake steroids. Eyes is, is being, <laughs> he's being mauled by a bear. A little bit of uh, Revenant going on here. Totally. And Snake Eyes' uh, outfit is um, augmented by the radiation. It's not being torn. Would the bear <laughs> not die then from radiation poisoning from eating him? Probably. Probably later. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. What is it? It's got some kind of a cattle prod <laughs> in this the Arctic. Guy. And he's Irish? <laughs> <laughs> Bizarre. Where are locations they? Locations <laughs> are very amorphous. Yeah, locations are very amorphous in the G.R. Joe cartoons. There's, you're everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. And this guy's strong. strong. Yeah. Yeah. strong. Well, there's a history of people being able to one-arm lift people. There was one episode where um, Lady J carried, I believe it was a doctor or a scientist, over her shoulder <laughs> with one arm. Wow. Because, <laughs> jeez. Uh, to quote <laughs> Quinn the Eskimo, a man who whips his dogs will pull his own sled one day. Mm. Major Blood didn't get enough love in the cartoon. Very cool character, but very few appearances. He's the, but, man, uh, who, he's the man who killed General Flag in the comics. Yeah, yep. old blood. Steve, you were saying uh, an over oversimplification? Um, oh, about Torpedo. Well, mm. I mean, <laughs> this is something that Rob alerted me to, uh, that Ron Friedman read in his file card. Oh, he's from Hawaii. And that's as far as he read. And was like, yeah, he must be this island boy with a great sense of humor. And everybody likes him. All ah, right. Okay. Instead of the file cards um, information that we get on him, which uh, I, I think I can quote, he has the personality of a dead fish. Cold fish. Ah. Um, Prometheus. The submarine that he's that the, the submarine that he's piloting looks a hell of a lot like the Super Dimension Fortress's arm. Yes. Those, those uh, of the, you who are Daedalus. Macross or Macross or attack. Robotech fans, yeah. that bow particularly looks like the SDF one, the arm. Yeah, that's the uh, the part that's used for the uh, Daedalus attack. Yeah. Very cool, actually. Uh, very cool design. Doesn't this uh, like strike you as Prometheus? Like when you look at this, you get like a Prometheus vibe from it. Yep. Yeah. These the tubes. And how do they look like worms? <laughs> that sound oh, is horrifying. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it sounds like two balloon, two balloon animals Ooh. like making love. <laughs> very good two analogy. Worms in real life. Are, are these all? Um, <laughs> um, individual like uh, Joes with code names, or or are some of them unnamed NDAs, as Buzz, Buzz Dixon refers to them, newly deployed Joes. I think those are all uh, common, uh, like the known Joes in yellow sweatsuits, uh, uh, yellow sweat, yellow wet suits. Bah. Yeah, because I'm wondering if wetsuit is actually in there, even though he hadn't been created yet. He, you know, could have been uh, in one of the early episodes, maybe not this one, but an NDA. Uh, oh yeah, Joe, just in one of these yellow suits before he was officially welcomed in and given a code name. I'm not and sure these... we see any NDA Joes in this p miniseries particularly because they do make make a bones. They, they do make mo bones about showing um, the Joes buddying up. So there's no green so shirts. We can assume that. Yes, we can assume that it's Tripwire next to Stalker. You know, like even if they aren't the most um, well detailed G.I. Joe action figures, uh, these are all named characters. One of my favorite I, I, lines. I, I didn't see any green shirts previously in, in any of these, oh. the, these episodes. We'll have to keep an eye out going forward because mm. I, I can't remember now if we've seen one. But one of my favorite lines from this miniseries Heavy Water, here I come. <laughs> What exactly, a bit of a mis what is heavy water? Is it just a like a denser water? 
Google it, kids. Google. Yes, let us know. Uh, also, a bit of a, a mistake. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, a bit of a mistake on the part of the modern era, era releases. Um, there's a red suited uh, Cobra Trooper there, and they released a red suited Baroness. Yeah. Um, and I believe it's part of the box sets for this, but she never goes into a wetsuit. She's always in that little purple bubble thing, which is a very cool oh, little vehicle. Paul, watch on, brother. She rocks the red wetsuit. <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry, that's my bad. Oh, I'm I'm too focused on what's in front of me right now. <laughs> sorry, sorry, listeners. Well, you were right at this moment. She's not wearing <laughs> one. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised they didn't put some of those. Like, surprised they didn't put some of those brainwave controllers on these worms and recruit them for Cobra. I'm actually, I, I'm going to second that because that's Cobra's chick, you know. It's interesting. Oh. D, uh, Duke making a deal with Cobra to get out of a bad situation. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Oh, indeed. It's a little bit of Stockholm syndrome there, since Duke was prisoner and now he's feeling a little. More willing to wheel and deal with Cobra. Yeah, he's he's got that familiarity. They're not so bad, other than the terrorism and murder. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to rule the world, doesn't everybody? <laughs> there is I'm, such a thing as tube worms in real life, and they never get to the size. Oh, it's, I look yeah. it up. Radiation. Oh, so glad you did, Rob. Also, <laughs> heavy water. I'm, I'm going to say it, but missed toy opportunity with those underwater um, uh, submersible craft things. Mm -hmm. I think those would have been great toys. Michael, nice, Michael Bell is Duke, and I'm really excited that he's going to be coming to the TF Con Toronto 2017, the Transformers convention, here in my home province of Ontario, Canada. Michael Bell, uh, performer of Duke, as well as Prowl and Sideswipe and Transformers. Looking forward to meeting him and hopefully getting to sit down with them for an interview. Oh, wow. That'd, that'd be, be great. Fantastic. Yeah. There's the red suit. Oh, okay. There we go. Nice. It's pretty uncompassionate. Sending those tube worms up to blow up. What if you <laughs> can drink heavy water? I think it'd kill you. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I'm maybe. just going to assume if, if it powers a mass device, it can kill you. Maybe a drop. <laughs> In like your super yeah. big gulp or, or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it adds fizz. Who knows? I'd have to ask Cujo for that uh, for advice on that one. These sharks are freaky. These prototype sharks. They also look more um, jumping fish-like or flying fish-ish. Yeah. I'm glad they... It's uh, amazing. Baroness still is, was still wearing her glasses. Yeah. <laughs> I love that laugh. Morgan lofting you beauty. <laughs> That's, I think, Peter Cullen as the scientist. He's got a very distinctive voice. That's true, yeah. Now that you mention it. <laughs> Peter, Peter Cullen didn't play a, a many characters in G.I. Joe, but when he's there, like as Xandar, you definitely know it's him. This is great. <laughs> Rob... <laughs> Rob's going to point it out because I know this is a Rob thing. Rob is going to just, he's just going to lose it now. He I know he is. Burns what? the... What? He's like, he's going to call the dog Timber and Snake Eyes will go, I want to call him Mumbles. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Snake Eyes doesn't even name the... The wolf. I, I'm confused uh, how he got the radiation out of the outfit and the outfit he can still wear it. I'm totally oh, confused here. Special herbs and stuff. I mean, this guy's like Colonel Saunders' brother, you know? I mean, he's got special <laughs> herbs and spices for ra radiation. And, and here's the radiation that almost killed you and made you glow. Um, I kind of think that this is Zartan because does, of what will happen. What will transpire later, you know? It does look a little bit like him with the eyes. Uh, and the disguise and the outrageous accent. But why would he help Snake Eyes? Well, uh, because he wants to get the, the element. Did he you wants to see? get the 
So yeah, there's a blue guy. It's, it's uh, Nightcrawler. <laughs> incredible. They're fighting Cobra with their, with their own machine. Yeah. The red mass device. <laughs> and there is Short Fuse, one of my favorite G.I. Joes, the first G.I. Joe I ever bought as a kid. Uh, I always thought there wasn't enough Short Fuse in the cartoon. <laughs> and he sounds kind of weaselly. But you see the short fuse right there. He has a short temper. And Steve yeah, is done. definitely a tanker. He's a strong dude. Yeah. So these two imbeciles <laughs> built <laughs> that with the help of Clutch. <laughs> it's <laughs> like an assault rocket. You put any combination of Joes together and they can build anything. They're just all mad scientists. But they even make some kind of chirp that it's pretty crudely designed. What the doctor does, Dr. Vandermeer. <laughs> and yet it's able to go into outer space and perform combat there. <laughs> this is put together by two grease monkeys and a mortar man. <laughs> Makes you wonder why rock and roll wasn't included. And listen, if they could put uh, a bunch of miners on a spaceship to to destroy an asteroid, I'm not. I can't take a. I can't take away Clutch and uh, short for using Steelers sort of satellite device now, away from them. Do these guys know that it's a one way trip? <laughs> <laughs> now here's a comment on the actual design of the mass device. It's got a point to it, which has nothing to do with how it actually works because it the teleportation fog or whatever you want to call it <laughs> drops off of the point it looks like i think it has more to do with the beam that then gets sent out to the relay star through metal and stone <laughs> well it's a teleportation device right so but it seems to have the like science. an offensive mode it you know it propels this beam towards the relay star and and um, towards its target then. And Covergirl there, is behind the wheel of her Wolverine. You, you're happy to know, I'm sure. Yeah, not in the intro, but in the episode, finally. Did anyone enjoy Cobra's, I suppose, precursor to the Astro Viper? Those this guys is, look pretty this snappy. This is very interesting to me. Everyone's cheering and so happy to see Snake Eyes, and he's just kind of standing there, unable to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> He did have his hand rather close to uh, Scarlet's breast. So there. we did get I mean, a reunion that's... there of Snake Eyes and Scarlet. Mm -hmm. We mentioned in the previous commentary, do they ever interact again? And they did right there. It was quite touching. <laughs> it's an 80s cartoon, so you have to have a moment where everyone puts their hand in the air and shouts. It's uh... The first of many times. That little empty canister is going to blow up the entire facility. And before it does that, it gives us this, it gives off a paralyzing gas of some kind. Ah. I mean, what an incredible booby trap. That's why I reckon, that's why I reckon the old, um, uh, old man is, is Zartan. Ah, it's, uh, he was he, he, he doesn't appear in this series though, does he? No, Unmasked. no, he doesn't. But he so, could be anyway. He doesn't exist yet, does he? he? No, he doesn't. But like you know, uh, hindsight and all that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Back to yeah, coming quality, retconning. by the way. It's called retconning. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. You just have to reassure like the kids that they're not all dead. And we have this preview, just like the recap is poor quality or poorer than the rest of the restored episode. It makes me really happy that um, Shout Factory went to the effort of um, remastering the episode because the episodes themselves look beautiful. Mm. Well, I don't know. I kind of like the grainy quality that these recaps have. Well, you the can colors seem less vibrant. I'm sure you can do some tape trading with uh, <laughs> some vintage fans and you can enjoy those old crappy gra grainy <laughs> quality tapes uh, night and day. Yeah. Oh, if you really if wanted to. VHCR. <laughs> you could always run a filter on your video player as well. I'm oh, sure there's plenty yeah. of guys out there who have created retro filters and things sure. with uh, anamorphic, uh, I mean, um, Chromatic aberration, etc. Mm. You can make it look like you're watching it in the 1920s if you like. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> or black and white. You Do you wonder if uh, it would seem more powerful and artistic if it was black and white? Oh, it might do. I don't know. I want to try the 1920s one. Then like all the dialogue <laughs> is just replaced by piano and subtitles. So this will be amazing. <laughs> mm. Another quick episode. That was the worms of death. We're going to go into the recap portion of our show and we're going to start with paul what are your thoughts on the worms of death oh the worms of death has got to be the empire strikes back of this miniseries uh, <laughs> things are not looking good for the joes uh cobra has got the upper hand uh can't wait to find out what happens in the next episode and robert your thoughts i really enjoyed this episode it's pretty awesome and i like that they kind of Already, you can see that the cartoon series is is introducing their own designs for things in a certain in a certain way, or at least picking up on designs that are coming in the future, like um, the sharks, and then also the designs of the um, the space troopers or the cobra, which are pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Space eels. And Stephen. <laughs> well, my take home from this episode is that we seem to be pushing our boundaries. I, I just, so, sorry to interrupt. I just have to say that Steven is coming to us from the, uh, the force afterlife. Um, <laughs> the, the astral plane. Sorry, go ahead, Steven. I'll try and find a more <laughs> suitable, uh, acoustic <laughs> to record in for the next one. Sounds James. like a force ghost. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, my take home from this episode is definitely, the fact that in this miniseries, it seems like the writing is pushing a boundary that, or at least walking towards a precipice that they very quickly retreated from. In terms of the stakes, in terms of the danger, um, those tube worms were horrifying. Mm -hmm. And it was very evident in both Snake Eyes' peril and the divers that death was on the cards. You know, the scripting in later episodes or later uh, miniseries and then when it went into full time, uh, you know, one episode a day, I don't think they ever used the word kill or die. Right. Mm -hmm. And in this one, we do have repeated references to characters being a goner or we're going to die or... It's in the title of the episode, Worms of Death. Bingo. Yeah. And it's it's actually a good point, Stephen, uh, if I can just jump in quickly, because sure. fans were outraged, <clears throat> uh, well, outraged, devastated, because they weren't old enough to be outraged yet. They were devastated. <laughs> they were devastated at the loss of Optimus Prime to the hands of Megatron. And that is what, um, as listeners might know, th uh, that is the reason that the G.I. Joe, the movie, was actually relegated to a miniseries format and then released as a home video um, and never making it to the theaters because Duke also dies, uh, quote unquote, is in a coma. Yeah. And uh, the TV series never conditions, never conditioned its audience to believe that the characters could die. So when they did, it was a huge shock to the system, especially in Transformers the movie when the Autobots are in some serious danger, and and it's something that GI Joe shares in common. And and once again, it's just a lack of conditioning for the audience. It's uh, if if the audience had been sort of reminded throughout the TV series that these characters could die, that they do face um, you know mortal danger. Um, I don't think Optimus Prime's death would have been as uh, traumatic. <laughs> yeah. And but anyway, that was just... L luckily, yeah. it happened that way because I love Transformers the movie. I really don't love the G.I. Joe movie other than a few parts here and there. Can you imagine if it was the other way around and the G.I. Joe movie came out first in theaters and then they had to change um, and take out Optimus Prime's death in the Transformers movie? Um, so... Oh, it, yeah. At least how the way uh, things played out, I think they played out for the best. My thoughts on this episode, I think it's kind of funny that it's called The Worms of Death, even though they're only in the episode for a few minutes. But uh, boy, they sure do make an impact. I love the idea of the Joes and the Cobras being surprised by this. Um, well, I guess it's a surprise enemy, even though the, t the title is named after them. But I like that they're basically both goners and they have to compromise and work together to get out of the situation. That's not something that would typically happen in a straight, dumb, good guys versus bad guys show. 
shows that this show really had a lot more depth than a lot of <laughs> other shows of that time period uh, before it and even after it. Um, and I don't like to rag on my favorite old cartoons. I don't want to sit here and mystery science theater them. Um, but I just cannot get over the whole radiation poisoning of snake eyes, the old man getting rid of the radiation junk, putting it in a fire and then giving snake eyes his outfit back. Um, that whole thing is just, <laughs> it's, uh, you just have to laugh along with it. There's really not much else you can do about it. It should have been something else, some kind of other contamination, not radiation. I spare yeah. a thought for those poor <laughs> worms, man. They were just doing their thing, minding their own business at the bottom of the deepest part of the ocean. And along comes GI Joe and go tapping on their, their tubes, <laughs> which send them, sends them into a frenzy. And then what does GI Joe and Cobra do? They sever them from yeah. <laughs> their their mooring points. That's awful. PETA... Sen sending them up to a lower pressure where they would explode. I think that was the master plan. <laughs> yeah. They would be prohibited from relatching to the bottom of the sea. If this episode came out today, PETA would be all over that. Um, you know the expression, you mess with the bull, you get the horns? I think going forward, the expression should be, you mess with the tube, you get the worm. <laughs> 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 not to be taken out of context all right so that's the third episode in the original real american hero mini series gentlemen thank you so much for joining me once again thanks for having us mike and looking forward to the next episode which will be dropping soon it is duel in the devil's cauldron you gotta love these pulpy titles from the 80s so until then thank you all for listening Thank you for subscribing and sharing. And until next time, Nerd Mistake.